Married Magazine, which is Atlanta's premier LGBT lifestyle magazine. Gosh. And my question is, let me, uh, or, okay, so Husbands starts as a series about a couple who feels societal pressure to stay married rather than societal pressure to get married. Mm -hmm. Do you think this translates into the real world of famous, of non-famous gay couples that we have to show the straights that we deserve the right? Yeah, I think to an extent it probably does. I don't know, I can't speak for them. I'd be interested to know. Um, you can't speak for non famous gays? I can't speak for all those uh, people that aren't me. <laughs> but um, I, I think that it, it likely does. Uh, and I, you know, the reason they're famous in this story is because it heightens that, you know, like you might feel societal pressure uh, being a civilian, but when you're a celebrity, there's absolutely, you know, a microscope and an expectation and to be an example. Yeah, and I think it's pretty easy to put yourself in the mindset of someone who, oh, we got the right, and you run out and you get married, maybe a little too soon. I think that probably happens a lot. And then you're like, oh, if we get divorced, all our friends, the local paper, everybody, like everybody's, most people are a celebrity in some way in their personal, professional community. So everybody's got that burden, I think. Everybody's famous. <laughs> not as famous as you. Huh? I said, but not as famous as not you. Oh, but there's people more famous than you. It all works out. That's not true. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else? I have a quick question. Yeah. Jane, do you have any advice for aspiring female writers? Absolutely. First off, just think of yourself as a writer. Um, don't let people tell you female writers are good at this or that by being a female writer you can market yourself as like well I'll contribute this or more emotional awareness or anything. I think that's, that's a trap. I think you just want to be a good writer. Um, and for aspiring writers in general my advice is find out about the, the programs, the Disney Writers Program, the NBC Writers Program, all the sort of entry level programs in, that exist in LA to help people get started. Uh, if you're not in LA and you can't move to LA do stuff like husbands. Find um, find a partner. Find a, some producing people, and find the people with the technical skills, and make your own make your own thing. Disney writers are kind of the door for you. If I recall. Yeah, Disney was where I started. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the program's kind of and changed. Those programs require you to have some level of professional yeah. experience. They didn't now, used to. I would say to just make your stuff and put it out there. That's what I did. You know. Yeah. I would write and make videos from that, and just put those videos on YouTube, and that's actually how I met Jane. So just do it, you know yeah, what I mean? Action is the most important part. But that industry experience thing, I've got a feeling like if you, you like, found something that was shooting locally to you and you volunteered to go PA, like it, I, I suspect that if you are driven, you can find a way to accumulate the professional experience in, in a lot of different places in the country. I can piggyback on that. Yeah. Um, it's been commented very often and very recently that science fiction and fantasy shows tend to be more boys club. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if you felt that way. And I feel the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. I feel like the the you know the openness. Were, one of the rooms that's been most female was Buffy, obviously a feminist show. Um, a lot of the science fiction rooms I've been on, the ratio has been better or no worse than on any other show. Sci-fi is about open minds, op infinite diversity, and infinite combination. I don't think I don't think it's as much of a boys' club as people think. I think the boys' club is um, multi-camera comedy, very traditional sitcoms. Those are the rooms that I saw where it was really, really a boys' club. Yeah, but I think that's opening up now too. But Hollywood in general, I think, is just male-dominated. Um, but it's not it's not so heavy that it feels like a boys' club. But yes, generally you're meeting more um, men and mostly white people. It's really weird. It's and I don't know why. I don't. It just seems well, to attract a, a certain sort like, of type, and that's that's what it is more often. But it's not. And once a place is populated by a certain type, who are you going to hire to put on your staff? People that you're comfortable with, and people without realizing it, hire people that it's look like, like them. It's like a subconscious report yeah. thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, this person's like me. So if it's you know a bunch of white men started it, and then all the white men are hiring white men, just going like, oh, I get along with this guy. Weren't you hired for something where you were sort of warned, like, when you get, there's a bunch of bros there, like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. They're like, you know, we're bringing you in because you're diverse. <laughs> and they're like, oh, everyone in the, yeah, she said everyone else in the room is, is kind of a, you know, a college, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? College, um, Girl? yeah, <laughs> mentality, sort of like, you know, there's going to be a lot of dick jokes, and they're not, she said, they're not going to necessarily know what to do with you. <laughs> Please, that's, I know how to do that, that's my whole life. <laughs> uh, 
do you think the bias against lesbian and gay and other characters has gone away? Is it still there? And how are you dealing with it if it is? Well, just look at the numbers. You can see it's still there. Um, and the way we deal with it is by making shows like Husbands. Uh, when the network doors weren't quite ready to burst open, we were like, well, let's do it outside those doors. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, there's still um, sort of, well, it, like, why would it exist in the show unless that's what we're pointing to? You know, like, why would we have a gay character if it's not about them being gay? Mm -hmm. You know, you'll hear a showrunner say, like, oh, we don't want to deal with that. We don't know how we would tell that story. And it's like, there's no, just, just make a character gay. Like, you don't have to tell a story about them being gay. Right. right. Um, and we happened to, in a way, like, it's not incidental for our characters, but we also really right. applaud the shows where it is incidental. Sure. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with, with, you know, kind of the, the new structure, the new, new delivery format you're using for Husbands, what kind of metrics are you, uh, this is successful, what are you, what are the metrics you is use for success? For yeah, is the it, numbers? I, yeah, I mean, I mean for the, I mean for you personally to feel it was successful, is it just, it got no, made and yeah, you were happy no with metric it? For personal success mm -hmm. at all. <laughs> okay. I, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I mean, like, if it, if it got a thousand hits or if it got a million hits, uh, neither one of those would, would factor into my, okay, that was successful. Mm -hmm. um, what is successful is the reaction that it gets, the influence that it has, the, um, the impact that it has on people when we meet them that are fans. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, sort of established um, a precedent in the industry, which is that, like, oh, content centered around gay people doesn't necessarily scare people away. <laughs> um, and we were very happy when we looked at, at the actual numbers to see that the, the demographics were very satisfying and that they were the sort of the very traditional network demographics mm -hmm. where we got mm -hmm. both genders across all age groups mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. until you got like over 60 or something and then it all fell off. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't all fall off. It, it's <laughs> <on the tapers. laughs> Everybody over 60 died. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, which it, it, it proved off, but it was. It was incredibly, yeah, it did. It proved our point, which is that uh, it's the, it can be mainstream content. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, I mean, we didn't, I didn't even at least think that it was going to be quite that diverse, but it really is. It's like 18 to 55, and it's, it's right down, it's like 49, 51 mm -hmm. on either side of the gender line and, and pretty even across the ages. Yeah, really pretty, because I think a lot of people saw it as niche program for a niche audience, right. and we're like, it's really not. Right. It, it just, there's this falsity that your audience looks just like your characters. And when I was a kid, most of the shows that I watched, the characters were black or Jewish, and it didn't mean I wasn't watching in my little white bread Iowa hometown. Mm -hmm. I was I was watching those characters and really quite identifying with them. Um, and yeah, I loved the Golden Girls, and I was like six. <laughs> <laughs> and so this, it's a total falsehood, and so people are like, "Oh, you've got gay male characters. You're only going to get a gay male audience." And that wasn't our audience at all. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, so um, make sure everyone gets branching out into the other form of media with a comic book, right. you're getting a whole new audience who may not have, you know, seen the web series, but like, oh, they're like, what is this? Okay, right. and that is traditionally comic books uh, can be that that stilted white straight male mm -hmm. audience, as you can tell by all the costumes and the ladies. Um, <laughs> those books. Yeah. But you're you're able to just branch out into a medium that you have a familiarity and comfort mm -hmm. level with. Um, how hard was it to get that to paper to publishing? Was very, there resistance from No, not at all. Well, I already had a pre-existing relationship with Dark Horse Comics, but they were responding to the material mm -hmm. more than to me, I think. They just liked it. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and I think it's sort of one of those things where as you, you look, look around, don't just look at the, the girls in the pages, but look at the women here at the con, and you'll see how many women there are who are genuine fan geeks um, in the best possible use of the term, yeah. And so I think that notion that comic book readers are, are sort of the, the aging white straight males, I think that's starting to really change. Mm -hmm. We've met so many like rad young women covered in tats who are like, I'm a comic book artist. Like, yeah, awesome. <laughs> totally. Yeah. yeah. And it was really fun. It was fun to write the book. Well, and the other thing is that um, there was proof of concept at that point. You know, yeah. we had a successful show that was like, we already had a built-in audience that would love to read a comic. So why wouldn't you want to make it, you know? And it is, like you said, we reach out to a new audience. We had uh, someone come up to us yesterday when we were signing who said, like, I bought the comic and I read it and I loved it and I saw at the end from the successful series. And it's like, he didn't even know yeah. 
and that's that really makes us happy. Yeah, that felt good to make a comic that stood on its own as a comic. Yeah. You know, we didn't want it to seem shallow or transparent. Yeah. I mean, you seem like a uninformed, but what is the connection with the CW and what's going on with that? Yeah. CW, you should see. CW Seed is a digital platform that CW has Seed. launched. CW Seed, S E E D. It sounds yeah. like CW Seed, but it's not. <laughs> so, um, will international fans still be able to watch the show? Currently, it's not available, but we're working on it. Okay. Is that is the, the short answer? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's a time, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, if Cheeks was a real housewife, what would his tagline be? Oh, oh, real housewife, like on the show? I don't think I've ever seen an episode of that show. I refuse. <laughs> I'm gonna put that as a second. That's my second. <laughs> I've never seen an episode of this show. I refuse. <laughs> Jane, just real quick, like, okay, uh, um, Julie Newmar or Eartha Kitt? Oh, Eartha Kitt or Julie Newmar? That's a question. Eartha Kitt. But man, that's a close one. I don't it know is. if you can choose. It is, but Eartha Kitt. You take Eartha Kitt, and I'll take Julie Newmar. So okay. we're so we can got to both cover because okay. both those ladies, and I'm a big fan of Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, which has um, a very young Julie Newmar. Yeah. She's still Julie Newmar. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Amazing. So cool. I was thinking, you know what your tagline should be? There's a line in an upcoming episode that isn't out yet where you say, I can't housewife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good tagline for you as a real housewife. I can't housewife. I can't housewife. Well, then why am I on the show? Uh, I don't know. I think they, do they the housewife? Their cheeks refusing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> Are we going to see any sci-fi or fantasy elements and? We did it in the comic book, mm -hmm. um, where we took them to a sci-fi place. And we do live in an alternate universe where there's been a federal amendment for marriage equality. Ah, yeah. Which, yes. you know, maybe it's maybe it's not an alternate universe, maybe it's the near future. The very near future, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, has, has the repeal of DOMA and other things as they're falling into places in various states and now the, the IRS marriage thing, Right. Um, is that going to cause you know, like, are you going to be able to reference those things since you already have that right. in the universe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing about our alternate universe. Is I don't think that's unfortunate. I think, no, we've got, there are so many other things that, you know, we can <laughs> approach that have yet to happen that we can bring up, conversations that we can start having. We don't like to have conversations that are already happening. We like to have the ones that are yet to happen. That's right. And we do that consistently, so... Yeah, we've established that world, and it's it's cooler actually to watch all these different things fall into place and go. Again, we were doing this two years ago. We've said that, yeah. And I like That's to cool. think instead of thinking about how those all those changes affect the show, let's think about how our show affected those changes. Yeah. Because I I don't know. I like to think we help push the conversation. People said like the number one factor in making people change their minds is if they actually know someone in that community, in the LGBTQ community. And now they know Cheeks and Brady. Well, and not just that, but you know, when we had the idea initially for the show, um, the way the industry reacted was sort of like, mm -hmm. it's too big. Yeah, you can't really do something like that. That's not gonna work. Right. And then a year later, we would describe the premise of the show and people would go, oh, so it's like a new normal thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, we and it's there. like, mm, no, actually it's not. I mean, mm, it's a different story and it's, it's amazing that in a year, everyone went, yeah, oh, I don't, I don't, what do you mean? Okay, so, but who are the main characters? You know what I mean? Like, Not to, just, just right, to seeing them go, oh yeah, it's just like that thing. And that happened in a year. And I think that we did affect that change, absolutely. Because there were a lot of people in Hollywood going, what is that thing over there? Right. Um, and I think that again, it was proof of concept that you know people weren't riding in the streets and people were actually embracing it. People, like mainstream people in Ohio, mm -hmm. you know, families are watching that show. And, and Look at modern families being taken in by this country. You know, right, yeah, but that's absolutely. okay because you've got all these other characters, like you know the straight couple and the kids, it's relatable, right? And, <laughs> and the gays have a baby and all straight people can relate to having a baby. <laughs> so, you know, when you try to pitch a show where it's like, it's about them being gay and in love with each other. It's about these two guys being in love. And they're newlyweds. And so sexy. They're, they're and sexy. Young. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They want to touch each other. And it's like, it was kind of like, mm -hmm. I don't think that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and there was nothing we could point at to say, look here, it's already working here. Which Whereas exactly. other shows that came along later were able to point at us. We wanted to put it online to show that not only did it work for our show, but like to create that idea that that was a, okay, so that is something that will work. Don't be afraid to tell your story or get your project yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, from experience personally, I didn't think I was going to relate to the show. Yeah. But when I watched it, it like 
paradigm change. Right. Yay. Because it had always been like it's just this big political thing. Right. right. But that like you kind of removed that aspect. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, do you get that kind of reaction a lot where it's like you've reached somebody and made them see it differently? Yeah. I have heard that. I think people are I think it, it happens more than people volunteer because I think it might feel um awkward to say like I didn't think I was gonna like it or I thought gay people were totally different than me <laughs> and then I realized you know what I mean which is not what you're saying but I think like people might be worried I love that, right? <laughs> yeah I think people might be worried that um that will come across a certain way so we don't hear it as much um as often but I will say that uh I, I opened my eyes to my own prejudice because we've had so many straight men say like I love your show and like they'll stand in line with us and be like I drag my girlfriend I'm gonna get her to watch it tonight and I'm like <laughs> okay like they're totally into it they're fans and they're straight guys so what do you think makes that connection for people who are wouldn't relate to it or wouldn't think they would relate to it well I think that it's funny for one it's just funny mm -hmm. and I think that it's a relationship and I think that when there are two same-sex characters you don't have to say like, I understand the guy in this relationship, or I understand the girl in this relationship, and if you don't, then it's just not something you understand. It's it's two, like, universal figures. You, you can put yourself in either one's shoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, as, as a woman watching a romantic comedy, you're expected only to identify right. with the woman, but yeah, you can identify either exactly. side. Exactly. Which I think is, right. that was your observation, I think it's really brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you, I think, you, know, you talked about you like my writing, and and the, what you see on the writing on the show is is sort of half and half of both of our styles. We have a very similar style, and I think one thing that we both do well, I think, is joke writing. And there's mm -hmm. nothing that makes a character more identifiable as when they can laugh at themselves, be ridiculous, mm -hmm. um, and and still be the hero of the story. And I think mm -hmm. like I think both Cheeks and Brady are funny, and um, and and you're proud to know them. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, a charming neurosis uh, yeah. to it, which is, I think, the best way I can put it. True. Um, uh, was the name there of my ever <laughs> any, uh, was it always meant to be two male characters versus the possibly easier in of two female characters because society, Western mm -hmm. societies, easily accepting more of women expressing love, uh, even to another woman, uh, than men to men? You know what's interesting, though? It's like, that is... Because I, I, we made that point in um, season two with the lesbian pillow fight happening in the background. And somebody said, yeah, right, like in reference, sort of like criticizing it, like that's why there's so many lesbians on TV. And I thought, what, there really aren't a lot of lesbians <laughs> on TV. The, the lesbian depiction that you see is the lesbian fantasy that, oh, we're just girls experimenting, which is how we depicted it. I mean, we weren't yeah, depicting yeah. it as like, you know, actual lesbians. Um, they were, what do you call them, the, what do they call them? The girls that, you know, are lesbian for a while, but then they go back. Lipstick. No, yeah, okay. Lesbian is okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so it's, I, I don't know if that's a thing. It, yes, they were always intended to be two male characters. Um, but I don't know that that would necessarily be an easier route, even if they weren't. This very much is Brad's concept. It comes from Brad's experience of life, so yeah. it was going to be two guys. Um, I worked on Ellen. And I remember saying it to someone at the time, saying, like, I knew there'd be a gay show on TV eventually, and I knew it would be women, because uh, the country's less freaked out about that. And I remember, even at the time, I was like, are they? Are they less freaked out? Um, but yeah, we got a lot of fans who ask us, like, are you going to ever make wives? And it's like, I don't know, but this is, uh, husband's what, what, it's your show, and it really spoke to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have time for one more question. Okay. Well, then you could, you could keep I, answering, I, stay, yeah. I just have to run to my panel, but Brad. It's your panel? Yeah. If you would but, like. Do that. Uh, a few more for you. Okay, cool. So one for me, and then I'll, I will take off. Oh my God, I'm really here to talk to you, Brad. Oh, now the pressure's on. <laughs> <laughs> I get one more question. Can I ask you a once question? Sure. Okay. All the alternative universes. You've written for a lot of shows that have their own universes. If right. there were no copyrights anymore, and you could bring any show you've worked on previously into the once universe, what would it be? Oh. I got to bring Colonel Ty on to husbands. That was good. Oh. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, nicely done. <laughs> um, but uh, you, of all the shows I've worked on, you cannot beat Buffy. Buffy was was really something miraculous and special. And so, yeah, if if Buffy and Faith showed up in Storybrooke, like, they'd have some stuff to slay. <laughs> they could slay some dragons in fairytale land. Is Battlestar Galactica Empire dead? 
Uh, I don't know. Because, um, you know, they, they did Blood, Blood and Chrome and stuff. Well, I know it's a property that Sci-Fi was very proud of, and I'd like to think that there would be a way to bring it back. I know they were always very interested in doing a, a broadcast story about um, Adama's gears in the war. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think that that is still a story that should be told. So. I like Caprico. Maybe I was the only one. But I, I think you it. were the only one, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> If you could have anyone guest star on Husbands, who would you want? I would love to have Amy Sedaris. Wow. And what role? Uh, uh, that's a good question. She'd make a great sister. I think, that's a good thing. Oh, I think she's an only child. <laughs> um, I'd like to put her in some sort of authority role, like a life coach. You know, or something, but she's drunk all the time. You know, like some sort of ridiculous. She thinks she has all the answers, and she clearly doesn't. I think it'd be really fun to see from her. Um, how far, how many seasons do you think you can, I don't want to say get out of it, but are interested in yeah. telling the story? Uh, uh, get out of it's a fair phrase, too. Because, you know, you don't want to go on and on and on yeah. to where it's just you're really, like, juicing what's left. But could you really jump the shark in the last episode? Like, see <laughs> you over... Oh, just like, it woke up and it was all a dream or something? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I would love to wake up in bed next to Suzanne Plachette. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she so not now, right? <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think years. I mean, there's so many marriage stories, and there's so many sitcom tropes that I would love to explore um, that I, I think you could go on for, you could probably go on for 10 years, but I'd probably want to go on for like seven or eight. Is there a future uh, broadcast or KO? Very potentially. I mean, CW Seed is called that because it is sort of an incubator for them to uh, work with the talent and the creators and, and determine if, you know, uh, they're interested in uh, either making more of that content online or for broadcast. Does the Seed give you more money for production? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but enough to, that we go. Does it in any way limit what you're allowed to do? No, they um, are totally hands-off creatively. They've been extremely supportive. Um, they liked the show that we made. You know, it was interesting because we had other meetings where you can't even get the person to watch it. They're like, well, just tell us what it's about. And it's like, okay, well, I can send you a thing. And you go, yeah, 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 I probably won't have time to watch it. Just tell me what it's about. <laughs> um, we went in and they knew the characters' names and they got, you know, the, the subtext of everything. And um, so, yeah, they were like, we like your show. Keep making the show you make. Awesome. So it's great. Have you seen that on Tumblr there's an animated gift from the end of the second season with uh -huh. Felicia Day doing the pizza? Yeah, it's yeah. got like 40,000 views in like two days. Yeah, and it's funny because I saw some, that someone was saying about um, the watermark. Like, oh, it's good that it's got that team husband's watermark. And so I'm glad that I insisted on it because yeah. I remember the director <laughs> saying, well, that watermark doesn't really, it's out of the world of the show. And I was like, okay, the whole reason this piece at the end exists yeah. is for social. Yeah. Media. Yeah. And how, do, how much does that play into when you guys are like developing? You're developing a web series. Oh, everything. And you, yeah. you're, you're obviously, I mean, from what you've done, taking this character from a YouTube channel to mm -hmm. a fully developed world. Yeah. Um, how? What? What are your? What's your advice or what's your comment on just on? Use you're utilizing social media, because um, you seem to be a, a, a really good, like I would say, a success story in a lot of regards. Um, I would say to be constantly thinking about it. I mean, that's actually one of my favorite parts is organically uh, coming up with ways in which your content is tied into your marketing. So yes, absolutely. I I wanted to like, okay, here's a point we're making. That's where, you, where I started. The social yeah. satire here is America's afraid of sex, yeah. unless it's a woman shoving a piece of pizza down her throat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the message, right? Yeah, and then pizza. it's, okay, <laughs> what actors can we get that is the least likely to do that so that when we do it, that actress's following is like, what? She did what? Felicia Day. She's she's a geek, right? She's yeah. not like the shoving pizza down the yeah. throat type. <laughs> um, and she even showed up and was like, I don't do the sexy thing. And I said, yeah, that's exactly the point. That's yeah. why <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. we want you to do it. And so, and she threw herself into it and was really great. Yeah. And then, yes, I absolutely put the team husband's watermark in the bottom left-hand corner, or maybe it's the right hand, because 
I wanted it to get shared a lot yeah. on Tumblr and other mediums and YouTube, and yeah. I wanted people to see that and know where they could find the content. So it's absolutely um, a marketing strategy, but it started as a piece of content yeah. that, that actually had a message as well. Yeah. And that is my favorite part, um, I think, of, of designing content. I mean, I changed the whole structure of uh, the wedding episode with Amy Acker, and part of the reason, there were other reasons, but part of the reason I did so um, was so that I could get all those guest stars in the first minute. Yeah. You know, I wanted you to see faces that you knew yeah. and go, oh, these are going to be characters later in the show, I should keep watching them. Yeah. So, it's a big factor. Are you finding um, people are approaching you guys with script ideas or relationship stories out of their own lives, whether they're straight or not? Um, like, oh, you should do this story, and you're like, oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, every now and then someone will say, yeah, like, oh, it'd be funny if, and it's almost always not funny when they start with, it would be funny if. <laughs> I have my own brain, I can pick it up. Yeah, it's, the better ideas are when people aren't uh, volunteering them, something will just happen, and you kind of go like, that's an interesting thing going on there. Um, and Sean and I, when Sean and I hang out is when I really get um, good ideas. We went to a restaurant in New York and we were eating shrimp, I think, and yeah, shrimp. And Sean's like, he's got his napkin in his lap and he's cutting his shrimp with a fork and knife, which I don't understand. I mean, maybe I'm just white trash, but come on, right? <laughs> and I'm like sucking out the heads and tossing the things on the thing. And I mean, Sean is like very organized about it. And it was just, it was a Felix Oscar kind of moment. And I thought like, Cheeks and Brady go to a fine restaurant. That's the whole episode. And we get to see all the different ways um, that they have that experience. And and has the series affected your relationship or relationships? Has it given you insights to that? Uh, mm, I, I mean, I put a lot. No, I think it's more the other way. I, I, the more mm -hmm. experience I have with relationships, I can write for the show right. and different things. And I, I'm inspired by my own relationship. Um, like the whole, I'm going to kill this spider. My boyfriend's saying, you're going to kill it? Why don't you set it outside? <laughs> okay, well now I can't kill it. Now I have to set it outside. You know? <laughs> Otherwise, I'm the evil boyfriend spider killing person. Um, we never look at you the same. Right, exactly. And then it says so much about him. Like, oh, really, you're not just gonna kill the spider. You have to like, it's that him. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. I'm not that humane because I was just gonna kill the spider. But we have a limit now on like, if the spider's really big and scary, then it can die. <laughs> but if it's just a little spider, then we have to set it outside. <laughs> I play along. <laughs> Have you ever put anything, like from personal experiences in the show, mm -hmm. that afterwards you're like, ooh, maybe I shouldn't have, or? I, uh, not that I shouldn't have, but I, I didn't realize that I was putting a personal experience into the show when, uh, in the second season, she, uh, she tweets a picture and it becomes a really big scandal, and it's like, oh, the shocking picture, but it's, it's him and Brady kissing. It's not a shocking picture at all. And, um, you know, it's on the news, and they censor it, and uh, that had actually happened to me. I ended up in a series of pictures from somebody who got really popular overnight, and um, it was, you know, a big deal for that person, and, and the media was sort of treating it like it was this shocking, scandalous thing. And so somebody um, referenced that, and. Uh, brought up that that was specific to that experience and I thought oh I guess you're right because in my mind that was just like a thing that happens you know like you know when you tweet the picture and everyone makes a big deal and it's like on the news and and I, that sounds kind of out of touch but I, I really I didn't realize that that was specific to me I just thought that was the world we lived in like that when when um, men specifically try to express themselves that way it turns into this big scandal um, and actually, if I think about it, I'm like, no, that was specific to my experience. Like, I didn't mean to write that from my life, but I did. Yeah. I was bullied a lot. I, I mean, I was struggling with my identity because um, I wanted to fit in, actually, for a long time. I couldn't stand that I was so different, no matter what I tried to do. Right. Um, and I wanted to be like everybody else, and I wanted to be popular, and I was, I was uh, just constantly, constantly, constantly bullied every day. And it was... Uh, hard. It was like middle school is really hard. Um, so I think that that would make me feel better because I, I used to visualize living in Los Angeles and my own little apartment 
And in the mornings, I'll get up and take a shower, and I'll listen to the radio, and there'll be a palm tree outside my window. <laughs> and then one morning, I was showering in my little apartment in Los Angeles. <laughs> and I remember looking out, I had a glass shower, and there was a palm tree, and I was like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I'm here. It was really weird. But you talked about bullying, and there's a lot of consciousness about bullying right now, and mm. getting involved, mm -hmm. and any of that message, or how to stomp out bullying, or whatever. Uh, I would, I, that's a topic that I would like to explore more. Um, I think bullying exists in all levels in ways that we don't realize. I think a lot of people that are anti-bullying are bullies, um, <laughs> and they don't realize it. And I think that the key to end bullying is uh, understanding the, the source of it, where it comes from, right. and it's, you know, I, I guess there's a, an emphasis on stopping the bully, you know what I mean? Like, sure. the problem is over here, and actually if you can work out um, the right perspective in here, then the, it doesn't even get to you, it's diffused and falls by the time, you know, and they have no power. Right. Um, which is a, a trite and fast way of trying to communicate that idea, but yeah, that's something I'd love to get into more on the show. It'd be fun with a celebrity blogger, a mean celebrity blogger <laughs> as a character, <laughs> yeah, who then becomes not a bully anymore, um, and actually just changes the way in which he bullies, um, possibly based on real life experiences. <laughs> Asterisk by it, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. <laughs> you go down with the asterisk. Meaning, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are there um, people in the industry that come up to you surprisingly and say, oh, I saw this, and it's really awesome, and I want to be a part of it? People that you don't necessarily have an established relationship, or that maybe Jane doesn't have an established relationship? Well, there were people that we reached out to. We didn't know Beth Grant. Um, but she did a long time ago, she was in an episode of something that was Jane related, um, but we didn't know her, uh, and there was another actress who reached out to that we didn't know who, unfortunately, for scheduling reasons couldn't do it, but responded really well and was like, I'll be honest, I don't do web stuff, she has like a judgment on web stuff, um, but I would love to do this, I really want to be a part of it. Um, uh, there, there are a couple people that have surprised us in, in just saying, like, oh, I would love to blah, 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 blah. Even people that we do know that we thought maybe wouldn't. I mean, I, I did not expect John Barrowman to say, how do I get on husbands? <laughs> and like volunteered it. Like, wow. you know, it was, it, that was crazy. Um, yeah, so it's been, it's been really cool to see that response. And, and to see someone that you know and admire who's like, oh, I like your stuff, or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has he helped acceptance, John Barrowman? Because we see him all over the place and he seems to be loved by a lot of people. Straight Has he helped uh, acceptance? Yeah. I, I guess, I don't know. I should have to ask him. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, maybe in the niche uh, sci-fi world, which has, again, traditionally been straight male world, mm -hmm. um, to have his character has obviously opened a lot of minds for people, mm -hmm. um, but I don't think in mainstream America he's not hosting the Tonys like Neil Patrick Harris. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah work in different realms. Here, yeah, uh, although in England he's divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. um, that's true, and I think that Russell Davies has owed a lot of credit for um, for that um, for that character and that presence in the world of sci-fi, and of course John for playing the character and then for being gay helps too. <laughs> The fact that he can say, but I am in real life too. That's great. Yeah. Uh, how did your time at Second City um, help your creative de development and the development of the character of Cheeks? And oh, absolutely. everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I was always a uh, funny guy, you know. Yeah. It was sort of my defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, working at Second City or going through that program was. Um, it helped me shape comedy and see like why comedy works. What's the game of this scene? Why are these characters important? What do they have you know, in this scene that is important to them? What are their goals? Uh, there are a lot of rules to comedy and properly following those rules make for much, much sharper.